2006 Chevrolet Silverado with a um, 5.3 engine. Customer concern is he has uh, some several um, issue with the vehicle, but for right now he wants me to attack a issue related to a HVAC control unit. Apparently what happened, he's telling me the air is not blowing to the windshield. And I pull out my scanner and this is the coils I pull out. Let me find out a place where I don't have too much um, glare right there, maybe. Uh, and so I have the full vehicle scan and we can find out here has a for the fuel level sending unit circuit but this is these are the one we're gonna be attacking today right here for the air conditioning B0414 temperature one feedback control circuit range performance <clears throat> B0424 temperature control two feedback circuit range performance but this one called my attention, you know. B1375, device one ignition circuit, malfunction. Circuit three. Hmm, okay. <clears throat> so we're gonna be focused on that one and we have another diagnostic trouble cause here, but um, at this point, you know, I will recommend another package of diagnostic for the rest of the stuff. So I will be focused on customer concern at this time, but I wanted to find information about this one. What is that one? Okay, let's go to the wiring diagram and see that one, the circuit three, right there, the circuit B1375 device, circuit three. So I already checked the fuse and the fuse is blown. I installed another fuse and the fuse blown again, immediately when the key is on. So this fuse is this fuse here. That one is burning me. That fuse. H pack one fuse tank. And that one is feeding the H pack unit. Ignition tree. There is where our problem is. But at this point we're gonna be chasing a direct short because when I, I installed the other fuse immediately the the fuse got blown but this circuit has two two legs that one is is fitting that one and also is fitting continue on page one right here on page one and we can see it's fitting all the actuators here and we have a junction here so it could be on any place either on one of these each of those in between or it could be the HVAC unit too so we're gonna do the diagnostic for this system so let's do it together this is the fuse the one is getting uh, burn out as soon as I install it right here this one is the one so as you will see in a little bit i'll show you what happened but right here in the fuse box is this one the h pack one is uh, below the 30 amp fuse and uh, i will just install a new fuse so that way you can see how that one is a direct chart. Well, as we saw there, it was a direct short with um, the fuse. As soon as I turn on the key, the fuse uh, blow. 
15 amp fuse so that's a direct short let me try with the test light here and we're gonna be monitoring the leg that one has the short and look at this here turn on the key and we can see that one let me check with um gonna be using this um amp probe here and to find the leg where is the the short going to as we can see this uh test light is illuminating about 324 milliamps so that's a low um current um draw uh, lamp test lamp so now at this point what i will do is to make sure the one is not back feeding the ground i will use a, a little bit higher amp uh, test lamp let's find out that one this one is uh like a two amps something so let me find out here what happened so we can see there it's about two amps so we're gonna use this one to find out on the wiring diagram the leg the one is shorting out so I will have the test light uh, connected and I will start unplugging as soon as my short I find a leg the one is shorting out um, the light should go off however you know I can go with this one looking for one leg like this another leg here on the wiring diagram and then we go, we go from there okay Well, I have pulled up here the wiring diagram for this. So we can see right here, edge back fuse one, 10 amps, is the one is getting burnout. Say so hot in run. So we saw when I turn on the key, that fuse, this fuse, the edge back one is the one got burnout okay let's see what circuit that one is fitting so we can see on this direction the brown wire is coming here we follow that one and it comes here to the connector b5 we see ignition 3 on the b5 brown wire 2 h back control module behind dash so that's gonna be this one this module on the back that is one option we have <clears throat> we can use the amp probe on that one find out if that one is the one is uh, drawing the amps but look at this one here brown so continues on the pink one or the next diagram number one let's go to the next page number one brown it's coming down here the brown right here and there is a splice here a junction here is coming the brown to the pink ac hmm ip junction block lower right side of the dash okay so we gotta find out right there and we can disconnect this one right here and we can find out if we if when if we when we unplug this connector here if we if we unplug that connector here and our short disappears that's gonna mean it's gonna be in one of these so we can separately um, that way we're gonna be looking for trying to find the, the, the easiest place to go so we're gonna <clears throat> try to go to that connector find out that connector there and figure out um, if our short is going that direction well well because I'm working alone so I have right now there as we can see the light on and I got my my ignition switch open on the on position okay look at that one what I found here <clears throat> I found the simp 324 milliamps draw right here okay and I have it connected to the pin B it's nice OGM you know they, they label those A B C as we can see here a b c basically my draw is on the pin c okay and my pin c according to my wiring diagram is gonna be fitting these actuators where is my c right here we can see here pin c and we can see the two browns 
and also that one has two browns too you know this one too the b the pin b has two brown too but how we separate where is my issue is on my on these two or these two on which one is watch side let me see i got a lot of glare here um we have this fitting and this too well it's, it's easy look at here what i did here so i got here let me connect this one too this other two right there look at what happened there now I got barely nothing there nothing so I eliminated my pin B basically there my issue is not it's not there my issue is here because my my draw is on that leg right here right there there is my issue okay my pin C which one is feeding my pin C okay let's follow this one here see I need another uh, area because I got too much glare there let me see if I can find it here okay so my pin C is my issue is gonna be here from here to mode actuator left side of H-back module so this one is gonna be on the driver's side or this one is feeding that one here on the pin 5 recirculation actuator upper right of H-back module okay so this is the area where we're gonna be concentrated now first we're gonna disconnect these actuators if we can reach them first if the chores continue so that means it's gonna be in between here and that connector that's the next step well look at this one here since I have disconnected right now here my um, this one here my light is off right there okay my test light is off let me plug it in here look at what happened here lights come on goes off goes so come on goes off look at here look at the amperage goes off go on so most definitely we have our short on this area so we're gonna disconnect as I said first the actuator if that is my easiest two actuators and if my chart continue I gotta keep uh, checking on the wiring let's do that look at that now the light is off and I have my ignition on and everything connected here I got everything connected and um, well, I only touched one area. I'm gonna show you there what I touched and the light went off. Well, the only area I touched was uh, this area here, the recirculation door. Okay, let's go on that area and find out because I only touched that area and my light went off. Well, I'm doing the wiggle test here on the wiring and uh, I want you to pay attention to something here. Look at this here. Looks like a burnout marks. And looks like someone is being here already. I'm gonna show you that area here, but let's see this. I just will uh, just wiggle the, the wires and you like this, and you will take a look at the light. And what there is going, my sure come out. Right there, look. Well, we found it. So let me disconnect this one and see what we find here. Cause I'm just wiggling the wire there. Well, we gotta pay attention on something here. Look at this. <clears throat> that one looks like it's been burned out. That's one. The second is this tape is uh, aftermarket and there is another burnout spot there. And look at that here. Looks like this wire. Well, I will have to uh, remove this one and, uh, and inspect those wires. But uh, at the same time, I want to show you something here. This vehicle seems like it's being manipulated here. Something has happened. There is another area here where I can see these wires too. 
they looks like they, they, they are like compressed or have been burned out right here too on this spot. So let's check the wiring harness on this vehicle and find out what's wrong here. Yeah, pay attention on this. This is what I call the action and reaction. Look at when I do this. When I press this is when my shorts appear, my light goes on and off. Look at that one there. Action, reaction, action, reaction. So right here is where I wiggle like this. So we're gonna open this one and find out what's wrong. Well, I removed the tape, the electrical tape. And um, as we can see, this is what I found. <clears throat> what happened here is someone, there was a short at some point here and someone used a tape on it, but it didn't do a well job. And then what happened is this was going something like this in between them. I'm gonna repair this and we're gonna do a edge by calibration like it should be done after the repair. I have my whole electrical kit here. <clears throat> what I use for peeling off the wires. Uh, also, you know, whatever, all electrical testing devices I have here. And uh, we can see we're gonna use that one to peel off part of the wires, to crimp the wires. I got three different colors here. I'm gonna use a bat connector here, those three. I got some here. And we're gonna use the torch to warm up them and uh, do a, you know, a professional work here. And seal it after we're gonna warm up and seal them. Let's do that. It's completed the repair here of the wiring. At this point, I will be sealing them uh, with the torch. And um, even though we're working inside the vehicle, we're gonna do a professional work. So we're gonna be sealing these wires and um, any other wires in the vehicle, I will recommend uh, the customer to uh, um, repair them. Well, that's gonna be more time. It's not gonna be in this uh, repair diagnostic. So let's keep doing this and get finished with the sealing of the connections. And then we're gonna continue with uh, clearing coils and recheck the repair. Well, I'm finished right now. The only thing I got left over is to install tape around it. And, but right now I will proceed to the next step, which will be calibrate all the actuators. Has to be calibrated after, you know, battery disconnected or any repair being done. That's the next step. Verify the repair. Well, this is a history from last uh, time I checked the vehicle. We can see all the diagnostic trouble codes that were here. And at this point, <clears throat> we'll proceed to um, clear the codes and go to the next step. I'm here into the HPAC uh, heating air conditioning uh, computer. We can see we're gonna read the codes right now. We can see we don't have any um, trouble codes set right now. Only there are gonna be in history. That's the history, even though you know it cleared it right now, because I already did a um, <clears throat> relearn to the HVAC unit. This function has to be done every time. Actuation test. Every time we do any repair or disconnect the battery, they lose those. Look at that one. And current status none so I have my air my air uh, everything right now and I will see I have this one connected to the windshield right now blow into the windshield and I can feel it here you know on my hand I can feel it here it's there so as it is right now you see current control status no no he said let me click on here to start doing the calibration and on, you see that one on? So I got my, my hand here and I can feel the air is still blowing this direction. Now I don't feel it anymore. That one is blowing right now to the floor. There, now it's blowing to the front, bent. It went back to 
the windshield. So it's not telling me, you know, when it completes or not, but I know because I put my hands on it, the windshield, and I felt it started there, and I, 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 <clears throat> I realized the changes to the floor, and I changed to the to the bend to the front. So now went back to the windshield. So that indicates me that one completed that one, and I can exit here. And as we realized, um, we didn't have to be on testing any of the wiring, you know, like verifying for wiring um, continuity, all that kind of stuff. That seems to be like an old school style, which is very time consuming and disconnecting end to end the wires. So we use the theory here of um, ampere, amperage, voltage and resistance with um, the, current, uh, the current clamp. So at this point, hope you enjoyed this one and learned some new techniques. Thanks for watching.